All right, hey everyone. Um, I am here where we've been starting on the main page of the GitHub, the GitHub README here, <coughs> that is kind of the home base for this project. So if you got here from YouTube, there should be a link in the description to get here. Um, and just come here and then we can start getting into mask rcnn here uh okay so if you haven't watched the other videos um you may benefit from doing so but uh i'll i'll try to make this stand alone enough because i i think for the most part uh people are going to be more interested in mask rcnn than these other models um okay so but we're going through this uh, computer vision tutorial series. So go ahead and right click this, uh, open this link in a new tab. Uh, that's the, the Colab notebook that we'll be going through and just save a copy to the drive so that you can follow through as we go. Um, I think you're gonna get a lot more out of it that way. So let's go over here. Okay, I had actually already started going through this just to make it a little faster for myself but okay um so yeah we're going to as an overview we're going to use the torch vision implementation of mask rcnn to uh locate objects and provide instance segmentation masks uh, for a simple data set of shapes the this is the same exact data set that we've been using. Uh, but if you're new to this project, uh, you'll get a sense for what the data set is in a moment. But before we get into the details, um, yeah, let's look at some of these resources. So here are the general uh, computer vision deep learning resources that I've found useful um, as I've been learning this stuff. And then here are the mask RCNN specific resources. So this is the original uh, mask RCNN paper. This is the uh, torch vision tutorial that we talked about last time. So that is definitely worth going through. It, as I said in the last video, it lacks certain things in that they're using, there's sort of a lot of things happening under the hood. Um, and I found it a little like tricky when you're first getting into this stuff to just go right into all of the kind of annoying like IO stuff where you're having to like convert a you know sort of like bunch of JPEGs or something that you have um, locally or maybe you downloaded and you have to get those into torch tensors and stuff so we will cover that in the next video but for this um, video, it's everything is just kind of built from scratch, no downloading necessary. Um, we're just building these sort of test images uh, to sort of get a sense for how these um, how these mask RCNN uh, targets look and what the model outputs. Okay, but yeah, uh, then I just wanted to so I have the paper here you can check that out I have that open here um, and it's a lot like the faster RCNN uh, model that we discussed in the last video but basically um, they do this reason region proposal network the same way in my understanding and then they take the region of interest and they do they have like a fully uh, convolutional network that extracts the masks right so you can read the details but sort of think about it as being very similar to the unit model that we built from scratch right where they're they're sort of it's you know it, it i don't know if the details are actually that similar but the sort of schematically that is a useful way to think about it and then um the boxes, the bounding boxes are also uh, created in parallel to the masks. Um, 
And yeah, so this is super cool. Let's look at uh, what this looks like. So yeah, so you get some bounding boxes and you get some masks uh, and then you also get scores. Um, yeah, so there are faster models right now. I think uh, like YOLO V3 is definitely faster, um, but this is, say they say it's running at five frames per second. So that's pretty fast. Um, and if we get a sense for how this model works, it's gonna be easy to understand how YOLO works. Um, so uh, let's see, is there anything else cool to look at here? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing it can deal with these like images with such dense, you know, so many dense objects. Um, it's really cool. So uh, in the next video, we will go through how to uh, put these masks over top of your images to visualize your predictions and the boxes and the labels um, uh, in Torx Vision or in PyTorch. So uh, yeah, we'll, but for this video, we're gonna try to actually train Mask RCNN from scratch on this toy data set. Okay, so let's get into it here. So as I've done in the past, I want to just start with looking at the uh, data set, visualizing it, and then we can go back through uh, and uh, sort of see how we built that data set from scratch here. Um, and yeah, so I highly recommend following along um, to get more out of this, but let's get into it. Okay, so I'm gonna click here on this uh, visualize data part of the uh, table of contents. And this is the exact same table of contents that we've seen in all the other um, tutorials. So I hope that's familiar. Um, yeah. If not, you will just see how, how it unfolds. All right, so let's look here. So this is a couple of sample images, right? We just um, have these uh, sort of toy, this toy set of images that we're gonna use to learn how mask RCNN uh, can be trained from scratch. And like, it's not a big jump at all to go from this to real images, right? All you need is, you know, a little more computing power potentially, uh, but you're also gonna need a huge set of labeled uh, labeled images, uh, you know, with uh, segmentation masks and bounding boxes. So that's why I started with this is because I can make 20,000 images in just a couple seconds to start to see how to actually train this model and get some intuition for it. And so I hope um, you all can do the same here. Okay, so let's look at the uh, data set. So um, we've got some target boxes. So this is just like faster RCNN, right? So um, we just have boxes around our objects. We've got uh, rectangles, lines, and donuts. And um, this is looking reasonable. Let's get rid of those and look at the target masks. So this is the addition here is that not only do we want to be able to locate the object in the image, but we also want to be able to apply uh, or get a segmentation mask for that object. Okay, so this is what our data set looks like. Um, and then you can mess around here with what all of these different parameters do. Um, but I will not go into that in too much detail because I've gone into that in all the previous videos. Uh, but yeah, mess around, you know, you can change the probabilities of different classes occurring uh, in order to make imbalanced data sets. And, um, you know, here I just cranked up the class probability for three and now there's a bunch of donuts in my image and not as many uh, rectangles and lines. Okay, so Let's look at the code here a little bit. Um, 
basically we've gone through this in the other videos but in case this is the first time uh, someone's watching from this series you um, we've been building a PyTorch data set and then we organize that data set into a data module which is a PyTorch lightning concept um, and the data module is really nice because it contains all of the data loaders for your train validation and test sets um, and then basically you can just feed that to your um, trainer when we're actually training and it it takes care of uh, a lot of things for you so it's really nice and makes it easy to reuse um, data sets so we're yeah we're using that and you can check out how that's built exactly but let's go up here real quick okay so uh, I wanted to we visualized the data set now I want to take a second to look at how we actually build that data set from scratch you all have this um, code in front of you though so I'm not going to go into uh, gruesome detail uh, but basically there's a couple of base classes these have been the exact same for every tutorial um, and this draw class is just responsible for drawing uh, the different shapes on the images this uh, computer vision DS dataset base is a so uh, it inherits from the data set class in uh, PyTorch and it basically is just responsible for all of the things that each data set has in common. So they're all data sets of these different shapes, but they have uh, different targets depending on what model we're trying to train. And so um, for those new to the series so far, we've built one set of targets that was for a uh, the, for counting the number of objects in the image or in these images the second was for unit so that's that was an image segmentation uh, problem and then now we've done it for faster RCNN and uh, mask RCNN and that is those two uh, have just one data set um, this object detection data set and the only difference basically between these two uh, between this video and the last video is that now we are going to include the target masks right so we have this target masks argument that is basically whether or not the target dictionaries are going to contain the uh, binary masks or not right and so for faster RCNN we didn't need them because all we were doing is putting bounding boxes around things but now for mask RCNN, we are going to, to need those, right? So let's look at how we actually build these images and targets real quick. So for each of these data sets that we've built, this is our third and final data set, custom data set. Uh, we've just had the same build images and targets method. So let's read about this. Okay, so it returns images. Uh, this is going to be like a byte tensor of shape. Uh, so by, by that, uh, we mean 8-bit resolution, right? So each uh, value, each element in the tensor is going to be a number between 0 and 255, uh, an integer, right? Um, okay, so that's data shape data set size, 3 image size, image size. Uh, and this is Three, those are the three color dimensions, right? So even though these are grayscale images, they um, are technically color images just with each uh, color dimension identical, right? So that creates a gray image. But I did it that way just so that these um, could be, you know, they're exactly the same as using real images. It's not, it's not hard to make it work for grayscale images. You just need to make the um, inputs one color dimension instead of three, but I thought this would be more um, transfer more for others to real problems with real images. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, those are the images that the mod or that the data set returns. Now 
let's look at the targets. So this is what's actually interesting, right? So the targets are a list of dictionaries, right? So each image has one element in the list that is a dictionary that contains uh, different things, right? So uh, it contains boxes, right? So these are the bounding boxes for each instance in the image, right? If there are n instances detected by the model, then there will be n by four. That's the shape of the boxes, n by four, because why? Because you need four, um, you know, numbers to specify the bounding box, right? Uh, okay, so, and then we have the labels, right? The labels are the class label for each instance. Then there's just n of those, right? So, you know, if the first instance detected by the model or, you know, in the data set is a uh, line, that is class uh, two. So, you know, the first element of labels will be a two, right? Okay. Uh, masks, these are, um, so there's, so let's go through this. This is a little more complicated. We're going to look at this in detail, but the masks are, are of a tensor of shape N H W, right? And there's one of these for each image, right? So basically that is N binary masks. So N layers, right? Uh, by height, by width, right? And so that's just the binary mask. We saw this in the UNET tutorial um, where we went from just like a set of labels to a set of binary masks. Um, uh, but yeah, so the first binary mask is just going to have the uh, information about where the first instance is. Um, so yeah, one key here is that with UNET, we didn't have information about different instances, right? We just had one mask for everything of a certain class. So even if there were two images, or two objects of the same class, we had no way to differentiate those in UNET. Here, um, they're differentiated, right, by the masks because there are there is one mask for every instance detected. So there's a lot more information contained here than you know than was in UNET, um, even though we're still looking at masks. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. But we'll, we'll see this in detail visually. Um, okay, so basically all that's happening here is we're iterating through the images and uh, we are making the masks, they're just binary, right? So, um, and then we're also building up these uh, target dictionaries as we go. So if self.targetMasks is true, then um, we build the masks. And we are going to build the masks for mask RCNN, right? Uh, and then so we need boxes, area, labels, image ID, and is crowd. That is what mask RCNN needs its target dictionaries to contain for you to be able to train the model, right? And you can read about that in the docs for mask RCNN above. Um, but it's all pretty straightforward, right? All we need to do is build the mask, right? We're drawing on this image. So all we do is just say, whenever I draw on the image, build one mask that is a binary mask for that instance, right? Uh, okay, well, you can look through this in detail. If you are new to NumPy, this might be a good exercise to try to understand <laughs> what's going on here. Uh, but one other thing that I want to point out is that uh, NumPy and OpenCV have a different convention for where the uh, color dimension goes, right? So Torch, the color dimension is first in the image. In OpenCV and NumPy, it's last. So just be careful with that. Um, that has, you know, that can 
is an easy thing to over overlook sometimes. Okay, so we visualized our data, or yeah, we already looked at our data, but let's look at s some of these utility functions that I built for visualizing that data. Okay, so display boxes, we already looked at that with faster RCNN, but all it's doing basically is iterating through a list of images and returning images that have the bounding boxes over top of the um, of the image and the color of the bounding box is specified by the label and this class map that we've built, right? So this class map basically just uh, has the different classes and it has their names and the color that you want to use to uh, represent that target. So um, yeah, for those new to how colors work here, uh, you basically need a three element tuple um, with z uh, num integer zero to 255. And the closer you are to uh, you know 255, the more intense. So all 255s is white, and then all zeros is black. This would be red, right? This would be green, and this would be blue, because it's an RGB uh, scale. It's also uh, good to note that OpenCV. Uh, doesn't use RGB by default, as far as I understand. So be careful with that. They have like a nice convert function. You can just convert the image from RGB to BGR or whatever they use. I think it's BGR that they use. But we'll see that in the next video. Um, okay, because for us right now, we're not even using OpenCV, just NumPy and Torch. So that is not necessary. For us to deal with. Okay, then we have this apply score cut. We also th saw that in the faster RCNN video. All that's doing is saying like, okay, my model outputs some bounding boxes or masks, but it also outputs scores. And I don't want to maybe like visualize things that have a score of 0.05, right? So I want to apply a threshold. Um, and get rid of everything below a certain threshold. Uh, so this is doing that just simply by building a new list of dictionaries uh, where it drops everything where the prediction scores are less are uh, or yeah are less than the score threshold. So uh, that is that. Okay, but then this is a new uh, utility function here. And this is thresholding the prediction masks, right? So uh, the model is going to return soft masks, right? So that means they're not, it doesn't return a binary mask to you um, when you're in uh, eval mode, right? It's going to just return uh, a soft mask, so a number from zero to one at each uh, element in the 2D mask, right? 2D binary. Well, it's not really a binary mask, it's a soft mask, right? All we're doing here is applying a threshold so that we turn that soft mask into a binary mask given a certain threshold. So, uh, yeah, that's all there is to this, right? Um, it's very much the same. This is a nice little thing uh, you can use to basically like keep all the other keys um, and values in the prediction the same and then just change uh, one, uh, one key and value in the uh, prediction dictionary. Okay, so yeah, then we have this display function. All this does is add on the uh, masks on top of the image and it makes sure that the mask is the right color associated with the uh, label that it was given, right? So, it, so this 
you can look through this, but uh, basically all it's doing is saying, okay, grab the color associated with that given label uh, for this instance, and then throw that segmentation mask over the image. Um, and then return this list of images. Okay, so uh, the, it, it also will threshold the prediction, prediction masks um, for you as well here. Okay, so now we have visualized our masks and our boxes. I'll show them both here again real quick. Um, and we kind of have an understanding of how these uh, targets look. Let's go down and look at the model, okay? And to get a sense for how these data sets work, mess around with all these, these widgets are nice for that. And yes, I will leave that up to you all. Okay, so let's look at the model here. Uh, I already ran this cell a second ago, but just go ahead and run this cell. Um, it's, this is almost identical to the faster RCNN uh, tutorial, but basically all we're doing is loading up this model from the Torch Vision model zoo, and then we are changing the box predictor and the mask predictor to have the right number of output classes, right? Uh, so you can, yeah, so that's all that we're doing here. And so you can specify the number of classes. If you leave that as minus one, then it will just not, it won't change the um, box prediction or mask prediction parts of the model at all. And it will just return the, uh, the regular model uh, with, that has been pre-trained on the Coco dataset. Uh, so yes, let's keep going here. Okay, so now, um, so yeah, I already ran this cell as well. So all we're doing here is we're looking at a little test image, right? And we're just feeding it to the model as a sanity check to see what the model outputs and to get a sense for how this works. Uh, so let's see here. Let's visualize this. Okay, so all I have is this get mask RCNN um, function returning my model. Uh, and then I'm looking at the input shape uh, mask for image zero shape. So we're gonna look at that shape and then uh, look at the whole output. Okay, so the input shape was two, three, 16 by 16. So very small image, right? 16 by 16 image, but we're just trying to get a sense for how this works. The mask for image zero is 101, 16, 16. So, um, yeah, so basically there's a hundred predictions here, right? A hundred instances were detected and that is basically because we're just feeding it a nonsense image so it's not making any sense of it and i think there is a built-in hard cap on the number of instances that the model outputs uh which is 100 so um that's that that's our soft mask and then we have these boxes so we have a hundred boxes uh for the first image a hundred labels, it's labeling everything a one. Again, these we're just trying to make, see what the model outputs. We're not trying to make any sense of this because we input a nonsense image. We're getting nonsense out. The scores, it, I'm, you know, it's kind of surprising that it's 70% uh, for some, when you input a nonsense image, but that's fine. And then these soft masks, right? Uh, you know, that's the, we have masks, right? For all the different instances detected. Uh, and yeah, I think I may have actually said that there wasn't this one here. That's, the output has a one, you know, has this extra dimension there. Um, but 
the targets don't need that extra dimension when you're in training mode, right? Here we were, we were in eval mode, right? So we're actually looking at an output of the model, but the targets that it needs are slightly different. So we'll see that in a sec. Okay, uh, because we're about to do the overfit stage here. All right, let's get down, how do I? Okay, so now we're gonna overfit on a couple simple images and um, see how that behaves. So I paused for a second to run through this, um, but let's look at what's going on here again. Basically, this is just a simple training step that we're gonna iterate through to overfit on these couple images. I think we're looking at three images. Um, so some things to be aware of, you're going to need to normalize the images, uh, make the uh, values between zero and one, uh, and you're going to need to put them on the device and also be a little careful with putting the target tensors on the advice, or I'm sorry, on the device. So yeah, once you do that, um, you hand the images and targets to the model, you, that returns a lost dictionary, and you sum up the values in that dictionary, and that is your loss that you, uh, you know, use to perform your backprop and uh, uh, step, you know, take a step um, on your, in your parameters. So, um, that is that I already ran that cell so go ahead and run that cell yourself and then let's look at this next cell so here we're just building a three uh, a little batch size of three we're taking those three images and we're going to overfit them to make sure that things are making sense um, and yeah we've done this in every video it might seem like overkill but it will really save you time uh, in the long run to overfit on just a couple images to just make sure that your inputs are making sense and that your model is liking what you're giving it. So, okay, so we um, grab some images and targets from our train data loader and let's look at this. Let's look at what's actually being output here. So I am, uh, sorry, I am printing the uh, input shape so the input shape is three, three, 25, 25. So we have a batch size of three, three colors and 25 by 25 image. And then we are going to print the target for image zero, just so we can get a sense for what these targets look like. Uh, and we're gonna print the key and then the key value and then the shape uh, of that. So the masks, these are going to be binary masks, right? So that's what we're seeing, binary masks. Uh, but what is their shape? So 1, 25, 25. So there's only one instance in this first mask, right? And remember, the output masks have that extra dimension, um, you know, that you can deal with however, right? Unsqueeze it or... Um, or I'm sorry, squeeze it, or however you want to deal with it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look at how to deal with that. Uh, okay, then you got the boxes. So there's only one box for this first one. Uh, the shape of the boxes, one by four. The area, that's just shape one. The labels, two, so it's the first image is of, has one, the first image has one instance of class two, and that's it. That's what we're seeing here. Uh, okay, this is all pretty simple. Then I ran this through 50 epochs of our little overfit function and uh, with three classes. Three classes because zero is re reserved for background. So um, even though I'm only, so here, yeah, I should go up here because this is important. So I had class probabilities one, one, zero. So that means I'm only gonna have class one and two in my image, 
and the default is that that is uh, just rectangles and lines, right? So I put number of classes three because zero is the is uh, defaulted to the background. So I want background, class one, and class two. Okay. Uh, now we we just go into the eval mode, right? And then uh, we can feed our images to the model and see how the overfit is looking. And I applied a score threshold of 0.25. We could change that to 0.5, but whatever. It didn't matter here. Okay, so then we're visualizing these overfit images just to make sure that things are making sense. So let's look, the prediction boxes. Okay, that looks fine. It's often off by a couple pixels. And remember on like a huge, you know, high definition image that is not gonna matter at all. Um, but we actually notice it down here. And then um, the prediction masks, right? And that's again off by maybe a pixel. Uh, but this looks good, this is making sense. And remember that the color that we're using corresponds to the class, right? Um, so we had R, or I'm sorry, red for rectangles, uh, green for lines, and blue for donuts. So that's our convention for now. Uh, and then, yeah, we can see that the targets and the, uh, the target masks and boxes were pretty much exactly what we predicted. So that looks great. Now let's go on to building out this lightning module so that we can actually train uh, a more complicated example here. So I'm gonna pause for a moment. Okay, so now we're going to build out this lightning module, right? So if you're new to PyTorch Lightning, the lightning module is a great way to organize the entire uh, deep learning project um, workflow into one object. Well, sort of the lightning module along with the data module um, are, are a really nice way to organize things. And we'll see how those fit together if you haven't watched the other videos in the series. But let's go through this. So basically we make this instance segmentation, instance seg lightning module, uh, and it's inheriting from the PyTorch lightning, lightning module class. Uh, we save the um, inputs as parameters or as attributes, and then the trainer, which we'll see in a second, will save those hyperparameters so then you can basically run with all these different settings or do a grid search or something and uh, then have in your tensor board display like each set of hyperparameters there so that you can compare the performances, which is really nice. Then we have some metrics. We've got uh, the bounding box MAP. Um, we're, not, we're not saving the class metrics just doing the overall MAP. Um, and then we also have the segmentation MAP. I've had some issues with the torch metrics segmentation uh, mean average precision. So I don't know if, if anyone knows, has some ideas. I've had to like, well, it works, it worked out, but um, just be aware that the, I found that can act kind of finicky. Um, Okay, then we have our model, right? Uh, the mask RCNN model. We've got our forward method, right? We're just gonna remember to normalize our images before we pass them to the model. And then we have our training step where uh, it's not a sort of typical training step quite because this mask RCNN model returns a loss dictionary. And so we're just summing up that uh, the losses in that dictionary and returning that. And then PyTorch Lightning takes care of the backpropagation step, the, you know, changing the parameters according to uh, <clears throat> the gradient and all that, right? So that is nice. We don't have to do that and some boilerplate uh, code is kind of gotten rid of, which is nice. Then we have the validation step. Um, so I'm only 
computing the MAP for in the validation step. Uh, you know, you could also throw that in the training step if you wanted. But it, one thing importantly here is that in order to uh, get the MAP for the segmentation mask, you need to uh, actually threshold your prediction masks so that you have binary masks, right? So um, let's look at how that works. This is the same function that we saw earlier. Uh, we'll look at that in a second. We also have to configure our optimizers and grab our uh, model. Okay, so then here, this threshold prediction masks, this is the same function we saw above. Um, and yeah, all it does is just return a set of binary masks from soft masks, right? Um, and replace those in the prediction dictionaries. Okay, so now we are going to train and let's go through the different parts of this. So this is where really for you, there will be the most sort of like room to explore and hopefully learn about how this works here and like the practicalities of, of training this model. Um, so we've got our data module. We can specify uh, the train valve size, right? So if I make this 500, um, you know, then this is gonna be nine tenths of that and one tenth of that, so whatever that is. So 450 and 50, right? So uh, then we've got the test size. I only made it 12 because I'm just gonna visualize a few images. I probably should have made that bigger, honestly, but um, image size 25. So we can make that bigger also. Um, okay, and yeah, you can specify the shapes per image and the class probabilities. And we're gonna wanna set target masks equals true because we want our targets to include the masks, right? Uh, okay, then we load up the lightning module. We have a checkpoint a call, a checkpoint callback for saving uh, the, um, the weights and biases and uh, we'll look at how that works in a second. And then we have a logger. So we're gonna use a tension board logger and we're gonna um, call it the experiment instant segmentation. Okay, so I pointed this out last time, but also just wanted to point this out that there is, there are some nice features in PyTorch Lightning just natively uh, where you can run like a fast development run and it just goes and touches each part of your uh, model. And then um, you can just make sure that everything's working. And you can also overfit a batch in the same way to just make sure that your model is working. So I didn't do that up here because uh, I wanted to just see how it worked in vanilla, show everyone how it worked in vanilla PyTorch, but that's a really nice feature um, that I recommend using. Okay. So let's uh, look at what, so I actually was training, I just ran for five epochs. And uh, so we see that the model mask RCNN is 44 million parameters. It's really not that much bigger than faster RCNN for how much you know, more it does, it's really amazing. Uh, and it's really not much slower either. Um, this just took like 10 minutes to train on this or something, or maybe the last five minutes. Okay, but let's pause and then we'll take a look at how that performed. Okay, so I just trained this uh, model for, with just 500 images for five epochs. So this was pretty lightweight, very small images, just 25 by 25 images. So, but we just wanna make sure this is working okay. So let's look at our, uh, at our tensor board logger. And this is just, let's just look at the uh, last experiment I ran, which was version four. Uh, and we can look at these uh, scalars, the loss is coming down, the MAP was going up. Um, that's looking reasonable. And the 
segmentation MAP looks like it kind of dove off a little bit at the end there, but I'm having some trouble with this one, but I, you know, it's making sense um, roughly. Okay, so then that is that. Let's look at how this actually performs on some images that the model has never seen before on some uh, images in our test data set, right? So if we go up here, this is uh, what the TensorBoard logger builds. So it builds this TB logs. That's just because I specified up here that the TensorBoard logger would be called TB logs. And my experiment name is instance segmentation. So this is a really great way to organize um, your deep learning experiments. And then I have the different versions that I've been running in this session. And uh, okay, so then I want to just load up like I have in the other tutorials. I just want to load up one of these. So I'm going to look at version four, epoch four. Um, it's all zero indexed. Right, so that's all I'm doing, giving it this path. And then I'm doing the load from checkpoint. Right, so that's like uh, a class method that you can use to just load from a checkpoint to build an instance uh, or you know, build your data, your lightning module, uh, an instance of your lightning module based on those weights and biases, right? Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so then I load that, let's do that. This should work. And I do some visualization on the test set. So I'm loading the test set uh, and then I'm gonna visualize on some images here. So you can run this cell again to get the next um, set of images and targets in your uh, test set and then um, see what's going on. Okay, so length of predictions four because there are, I have a batch size of four. Uh, the keys, boxes, labels, scores, and masks. So this is what the model is outputting now when we are in uh, eval mode, right? We already saw this, but I just want to reiterate that it's the exact same as faster RCNN, um, but now we have the masks, right? And it's very key to remember that these are not the same uh, keys or you know items that you need in your dictionary to train, right? We went over that earlier, but just as a reminder, you can go back up and look at the the data module and the data set that we built to remind yourself what you need in the um, in the target dictionaries. Okay, so now let's visualize these predictions. And so I'll, let's look through this. All I'm doing is just saying if target box, so these are just little check boxes. Uh, if target box, then put the target boxes on the overlay them on the images. Same for the target masks, prediction boxes and prediction masks. So then we can quickly visualize uh, this easily. So let's see how this worked. So the target boxes, those are the you know ground truth and the target masks. Oh, it didn't like something. Let me Okay, sorry, so I just had missed an argument in one of these. Um, but yeah, so we're building the, uh, we can display the target boxes and masks or the prediction boxes and masks uh, very easily with this. So let's first look at the target. So the target boxes, red for rectangles, blue for uh, donuts, and there happens just by chance to be no lines here. Um, and then the masks are there. So now let's see what the model predicted. So, uh, okay, so this looks pretty good. These are correctly identified. And then this one is confusing. If you just look at that, like visually, you can see how it could identify a rectangle in there. Um, but 
we could apply a score threshold. Let's see if that changes anything. So it it's it thinks it's closer to a donut than a rectangle, right? Because as I increased the score threshold, uh, the rectangle prediction went away first, right? Um, but in a certain way, it's not wrong that there is a rectangle there, you know, or there could be. Uh, so, um, okay, that is how we can use the score threshold. And then we could also put the score threshold way down and see if it starts to mess up. So it kind of had a double identification there, but with a reasonable score threshold that is dealt with. All right, now let's look at the um, prediction masks. So here we can change the mask threshold to kind of get a sense for um, how well, it, how confident it is, right? So if I'm, I'm decreasing the mask threshold way down and you can see like now it's, there's these points kind of on the outskirts on the boundary that are getting added to the mask for that class, right? Uh, if I then crank it way up, you know, it need it's only showing things above this threshold in the binary mask, and it's starting to become a little uncertain about uh, certain things on the boundaries here, right? And then if I crank that all the way up to one, there's going to be nothing up that exceeds one, right? But it's doing a pretty great job here. Let's go ahead and look at one more set of predictions and masks and. So people might be like, well, that's a 25 by 25 image. It's not that exciting. It might not be that exciting, but it's uh, very easy to scale that um, and make these images as big as you want or use real images. Now that we have demonstrated how to train mask RCNN from scratch on a custom data set using PyTorch Lightning. So, um, yeah, so this is, um, okay, so this is the next data, or the next set of images in our test data set. Let's look at the prediction boxes. Okay, this is looking pretty good. So we have a line, it's identifying it as a line, some boxes, or rectangles, and one donut. Um, all right, that looks pretty reasonable. Let me see if I change the score threshold. Oh, so there was actually a double identification up here. You can see that it had a box kind of like right here. And if we increase the score threshold, that goes away at some point. So, um, okay, and then let's, uh, let's now visualize the masks. Oh prediction mask. Okay, so this is again looking pretty good. Um, you know, it's off by a couple pixels, but if you had a huge image, this would be imperceptible. And then let's see what happens if we change this threshold a little bit. So it's getting a little unsure about these boundaries on the line. If I go real far down, now it's widening these masks. Uh, quite a bit and then if I go way up it's now uh, a little unsure about the boundaries right this is cool okay so yeah feel free to mess around here this was something I trained in like five minutes uh, so I highly recommend going up here training maybe with more images you know, maybe an imbalanced data set. Uh, bigger images will be cooler to look at. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep going here and hopefully uh, that was useful to everyone. Um, but let's go down and conclude, wrap up here. Okay, so we learned how to use the Torch Vision implementation of Mask RCNN we learned how the targets and predictions for mask RCNN work. We trained it on this uh, custom data set that we built 
that's configurable so we can mess with things and sort of build it intuition or that's my hope um, so if this is useful to you please let me know in the comments um, it might seem like kind of a low budget thing which it was but it was a decent amount of effort um, so yeah I really hope it was useful to people and then here I just have some like sort of questions that I think it would be interesting to explore messing with imbalanced data sets more shapes per image you know like more crowded images uh, can you get it to still perform well under those circumstances and then um, I've built all of this into a uh, Pi PI package that you can pip install. Um, so all of these like utility functions, uh, you can just have this pip package and then just use the utility functions that we built, the data sets, the models, and the data modules. Uh, I didn't put the lightning modules in here because I just think that's something that the uh, practitioner should should build. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong on that, but um, you can obviously just copy the one I have here and paste that into your project more or less. But um, I hope this just makes it easy to access uh, all the um, all the functions here very quickly and so that you can build your own projects. And also if you are you know, trying to test out a new model and you just want a simple set of targets and images that's not a total dummy data set, right? You could use this. Um, I mean, that's how I've been using it in my research. So, uh, yeah. So here I just show how you can get the targets and images using these uh, utility functions and the data module uh, module and I'm sorry, the utility module and the data module module. Uh, and then we've got the model that you can also grab from the PyTorch tutorials um, pip package. And hopefully you will then be on your way. This takes a sec to load, but okay. And then um, that's really it. Uh, that's really it. Okay, so yeah, in the next video, we are going to look at just, okay, let's say we have a trained model, we're just going to use the pre-trained model on Coco for now. But you could also have just trained it on a new uh, class, like I don't know, you want to detect uh, different types of rollerblades or something, I don't know, whatever you want to do for your, uh, for your application. And then you can uh, have a way to easily visualize the uh, labels and the masks on these images, on these real images. Uh, we're just going to use OpenCV and see how that works. And then we can also apply mask RCNN to some videos to create some cool like segmented videos. So that is what's coming in the next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.